In this video lecture, we're going to have a very basic introduction to the concept of inflation. What is it, and what are the effects of inflation? So what is inflation? Inflation can be defined as a continuing rise in the general level of prices of goods and services. The purchasing power of the monetary unit, such as the dollar in the United States, declines when inflation is present. Inflation means the level of prices is going up. So a way of calculating inflation is to look at price indexes. The way you can calculate inflation with a price index is this simple equation shown on the screen. What you do is you take this year's price index, subtract from it last year's price index, and divide that by last year's price index. Once you get the answer to that, you multiply by 100 and you have a percentage of inflation rate. This is essentially a rate of change calculation. How much has the prices, how much have the prices changed this year when compared to last year? So for instance, calculations with the price index of CPI, the consumer price index, what you do is you take the CPI for year B minus the CPI of year A divided by the CPI for year A, multiply that by 100 and you get a percentage change. So, for example, if we have the CPI in year 5 as something like 112, and the CPI in year 4 is something like 104, you can simply go through and do the math of 112 minus the 104, the original year CPI, divide that by the original year CPI of 104, and multiply that by 100, and what you should get in this case is a 7.69%. And that would be your inflation rate, 7.69%. Let's look at an important distinction we can make when talking about inflation. We can talk about inflation in terms of unanticipated inflation or anticipated inflation. This is going to play a huge role in monetary policy, uh, and we'll talk about this in later chapters, later videos, etc., but this is going to be a very important distinction. If there's unanticipated inflation, what that essentially means is that we've had an increase in the price level that came as a surprise, at least for most individuals. We weren't expecting the inflation to rise as much as it did. Anticipated inflation is something that we all widely expected. It was basically predicted. There was a widely expected change in the price level. It increased, yes, so there was inflation, but we all expected it to increase at about that level. So why is it that unanticipated inflation is so problematic or is something that we want to make sure we're aware of as separate from anticipated inflation? Well, there's serious effects of inflation, especially when it's unanticipated or there's high and variable rates of inflation that are really hard to anticipate. That are, and these effects are very harmful to the economy for three major reasons. And we'll go through these three major reasons. But to summarize them, they're basically price distortions, substitutions towards protection and away from production, and investment drops from greater risk and uncertainty due to these high and variable rates of inflation. The first harmful effect of, in, of high and variable rates of inflation is the idea of price distortions. Now, This is a major concern for many different reasons and we'll try and just briefly recap some of these. But the whole idea of the economy working very well in terms of spontaneous order and the invisible hand is that prices play this role as a signal and we allocate our resources in reaction to that signal. Well, if this signal is being greatly distorted, our resources might not get allocated correctly. If we have this distortion of the entire price structure, we have some serious problems in terms of the efficiency of any economy. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this idea of Cantillon effects. This idea is basically saying that we often talk about inflation as just happening to an economy. We, say, we give examples or say things like, well, let's imagine that we doubled the money supply. 
And then we act as though every individual now has twice as many dollar bills in their hand, or their $1 bills got turned into $2 bills. But the reality is that money doesn't pump through the economy this way. Money enters the economy in very specific patterns. It's not as though a helicopter just goes out over the United States and drops an equal amount of money to everyone. There is no just multiplier to the money that you already have. Money does not come down from the heavens equally to all. It gets filtered through certain institutions. So we don't have this helicopter money phenomenon. Instead, we have Cantillon effects, where the money enters certain aspects or certain industries, and therefore there's distortions because those industries have now had a bunch of money pumped through their sector. So for example, if somehow we created more money supply and we were pumping money into the banks and we also had other policies that were currently promoting banks to say lend out more money to those seeking to purchase a home, we may get some kind of distortion in the market for houses where all of a sudden now there's a lot more money in the housing industries and people are getting money filtered through that mechanism. We can have these types of effects known as Cantillon effects, where we don't have this helicopter type money and there's distortions in the price structure because money enters in specific paths and not general to all. It's also important to keep in mind that the distortion of the whole price structure will only disappear after some time once the process of inflation has actually stopped. It's not as though this distortion just happens immediately and then once inflation has stopped, that distortion stops as well. It will take a little bit of time for these effects and distortions to go away. I'd like to bring up two points when talking about price distortions quickly with inflation by two of my favorite economists, one Milton Friedman and the other Ludwig von Mises. Now, Mises realized that inflation hurt some people at the expense of other people, similar to the idea of Cantillon effects. Those who were industrious and conscientious and responsible and who worked hard and saved up their money were actually the losers as inflation eroded away their savings. If you save up $100 and inflation hits and it turns out that $100 is really pretty meaningless now, well, all of that savings you had, it really wasn't worth it. Those, on the other hand, who borrow a great deal and live beyond their means and spend lavishly, they end up being the ones who are winners from inflation as they're able to repay their creditors with the worthless paper money that they can now earn. The debts aren't as big as they used to be. Now, if we look at the idea of inflation, the other insight comes from Milton Friedman. It's this idea that basically inflation is taxation without any legislation. It's really a hidden form of taxation. And we'll return to this idea in just a moment. The second harmful effect of high and variable rates of inflation is this decreasing incentive to produce and likewise this increasing incentive to protect the resources that you currently have. Speculation about what will happen if the inflation rate is continuing to be high and variable becomes time consuming. You start to pay attention to what is going on with the inflation rate or other speculative investments that you potentially could have. Speculative practices are encouraged as pri people try to outguess the market. The relative incentive to engage in productive practices such as investments in buildings and machines and generally productive investment now drops relative to the incentive to kind of speculate on the markets. As a great example of this, many people turn to speculating on gold as kind of this counter to the effects of inflation because gold is thought to hold this intrinsic value or this, this great, great store of value. Even if we face really high levels of inflation, we can always fall back on gold. So if we own gold, we'll be protected and be safe. And while there may be some merits to some of these arguments, etc., the speculation that goes on 
once we have these high and variable rates of inflation towards gold, becomes somewhat problematic. As an example, my father-in-law actually was a foot surgeon. And he's a very productive foot surgeon. We seem to value that quite highly. We pay him quite a bit of money, right? Uh, so we must value his services to an extreme amount. Well, he was getting near the age for retirement when the 2008 recession hit, and he started speculating on the value of gold. And this became something that he spent a lot of time on because he was very worried about the potential inflation once government spending was starting to get out of control and we started to fall into a recession. He actually decided to retire six months earlier than he planned on doing and kind of got into a little bit of day trading and speculation. I don't really recommend this route for most people, but it just goes to show that this actually is a real phenomenon that does happen. It might only be on the margins, but there is some margins where this happens, where speculative practices are encouraged and productive practices are discouraged. The third and final reason why inflation can be harmful or high and variable rates of inflation can be harmful is really that inflation, particularly unanticipated inflation, can have really harmful effects in terms of creating uncertainty about the future. Economic action always involves uncertainty about the future. But wild changes in inflation just leads to greater levels of uncertainty about the future. As a result, investment levels drop because there's greater risk and greater uncertainty. And we end up in a state where we have a lot of uncertainty and very little investment. This is very similar to a concept known as regime uncertainty. This was a concept developed by Robert Higgs that describes a pervasive lack of confidence among investors and their ability to foresee the extent to which future government actions will alter their property rights. If you really have no idea what's going to go on in terms of the regime at hand, in terms of the inflation rate or government spending or other actions that will affect your business or your investments or your property rights, you now have loss and incentive to engage in those activities. So due to this regime uncertainty, due to this uncertainty that investors have, there's greater risk, greater uncertainty, you make less investments. With less investments, the economy will not run or operate as smoothly, it won't have as, as high levels of growth. Now what happens when we have really high levels of inflation? This is known as hyperinflation. Unlike regular inflation, where the process of rising prices is protracted and not generally noticeable, except by studying past market prices, hyperinflation is seen as this rapid and continuing increase in prices. It's this rapid and continuing increase in the supply of money, and this rapid and continuing increase in the cost of goods. Some define hyperinflation as an inflation rate of more than 50% a month. And this may seem wild and spectacular, but there have been a number of historical examples of, his, of hyperinflation. Seen in the picture is actually an example from Germany, where the money was constantly in a state of hyperinflation, where their inflation was just continually going and going and going, that it came, became to the point where money, dollar bills, or the marks, were so commonplace that they actually were better as children's toys or some people use them actually to heat their homes by burning them um, or you'd see people carrying wheelbarrows of money around. All of these stories seem absurd and ridiculous but they actually are true in countries where hyperinflation has occurred. There's an old story about when Ludwig von Mises was called in to help out a country in a time of need to, to try and stop inflation and he had a pretty simple answer. He asked the, the head advisors that were, were seeking his advice to, to come and meet him one night outside this building nearby where they were often meeting. And they came out late at night and all the advisors came to see von Mises and looked around and they're around this building and von Mises looked up and he looked at the building where the printing presses were. <laughs> 
where they were making the money, where they were continually printing the money. And they asked him, well, Mises, why did you drag us out here? Why did you drag us out here? And he said, I, can't, I drug you out here to give you a very simple answer to the question and the advice that you seek from me. He said, if you want to stop hyperinflation, he said, we are outside this, the printing presses. You hear, do you hear that noise from this building? And they said, yeah, we can hear the noise from the building. And the, the noise from the building was the printing presses running and continually printing off more and more money. And Mises gave a rather simple answer. He said, if you hear that noise and you want to stop inflation, make the noise stop. Make it stop and you'll solve inflation. Now, this may seem like a rather simple answer uh, by von Mises in this story, and it is true that now nearly all economists believe that the rapid expansion in the money supply is the primary cause of inflation, but this wasn't always the case, and a lot of the people who are at the head of states don't understand exactly how inflation basically runs into the idea of hyperinflation and how it gets out of control. Another reason why this answer isn't so isn't as simple as von Mises would like it to be, is the ideas of from public choice. While economists generally agree that Mises is right, if you want to stop hyperinflation, churn the printing presses off. There's public choice reasons why this could be pretty tough. Uh, the ch there's more of a challenge to it than just turning them off. It's hard to turn that lever, lever and shut the machine down. Inflation can help a government pay off the expenses it's racked up without having... This is really what Milton Friedman was talking about. Inflation is really just a form of taxation, but without the legislation and without having to push through the tax. S taxpayers don't see inflation as the government costing them any of their wealth. And yet, for the most part, that's really what it is. If you hold your dollar bills constant and yet the government pumps a whole bunch more money into the economy through their avenues and their budgets, basically they find a way to take that money and pay off their debt, pay off the programs that they have taken on, and yet didn't actually have to tax you anything. Everybody's value of their dollar bills that they currently hold just decrease a little bit, as opposed to you having to pay a little bit of your dollar bills to the government. This is an idea, this public choice idea is called fiscal illusion. It was originally written down by an economist, an Italian economist known as Puviani in his 1903 book, The Theory of Financial Illusion. He talked about the idea of fiscal illusion, the idea that taxes are seen. People paying the bill for a government program, paying the taxes, say, hmm, I'm going to weigh the costs and benefits of this program. Uh, I feel that it's going to cost me $3 to, say, provide welfare benefits. Okay, I'm going to weigh those costs and benefits. Whereas when you have inflation and you inflate, inflate away the wealth, it's an unseen payment for government programs. So individuals make the consideration of, well, I get the benefit of the welfare program with a cost of $0. They don't understand the idea that inflation is that same $3 cost as the taxes would be. So it's an unseen cost and then a seen benefit. And so we use this idea of fiscal illusion as politicians to basically fool the populace into thinking that we are providing them with great services at no cost. And thus politicians are greatly incentivized to use fiscal illusion and to want to inflate away all of the costs that their government programs have incurred. And so there's this major incentive to keep the printing presses going by governments to help them look like they are helping us more and more.